Hello and welcome to the Getting Started in G54 video. When you come into the studio, we need to power on the racks. So starting with the right rack, we power from top to bottom. Powering up the audio interfaces first, and then the multiple uh, time startup button at the bottom. And of course, remembering to turn on the Macintosh, which is slightly hidden right down the bottom of the rack. Then we will power on the projector so we can see what's going on the Mac. That sometimes takes two pushes of the on button. When you finish with any remote control in the studio, please replace them uh, on top of rack number one. Moving to the second rack, again, power from top to bottom. So the power conditioner, followed by the headphone amplifier. Then to power on the 1176 compressors, press the GR button at the top of the far right set of buttons. In the meantime, you'll have noticed that the SSL is now powered, as are the speakers. Log into the Mac using the password STUDIO3, all lowercase and no spaces. First thing to do is to go to the Apple menu and select that the location is set to SSL. This is so the SSL can talk to the Macintosh. Double check this by opening up the AWS 924 uh, software. And at the bottom, you'll see it says it's online. If it's not online, if that stays red and not green, then the Mac won't talk to the SSL properly. Select the basic session and click on open title. And this will properly name the channels on the SSL. Moving back to the SSL, double check, you'll see the names of them, uh, the headphone left, headphone right and out left and right. And we've now got channel one through to 20 named on the scribble strip of the SSL. Now we'll talk very briefly about focus mode. When we're recording, it's best to be in the blue mode, which is analog with the blue light on. And that means that the channel is sending signals into Pro Tools. Turning that off, uh, putting it so the blue light's not on, means it is in DAW control mode, very much like a control surface. So the faders will control the outputs of the channels. DV just now is resetting the desk. Now, it's always a good idea, it's good practice for the last person to do this. But uh, students being students and the way that recording sessions sometimes work is it's the last thing that you do uh, or you want to do. So just take the time to turn all the gains back to zero, turn off all the phantom powers, turn off all the EQs and all the inserts that might have been activated and make sure that channels aren't routed to mix or recording buses because this will cause confusion later on. And the last four channels, because these are monitor channels, 23 and 24 have to be in the mix bus and 21 and 22 on the record bus. And their inputs have to be in green light mode coming from the line inputs. Also make sure the Q sends are activated on 21 and 22 by pushing the top of the sends. Make sure the faders as well are set to unit again. On the master section, double check that you've got the mix bus selected for monitoring and turn the master fader up full. The control room monitor is controlled from this blue control and we'll just turn that down a little so we're not going to deafen ourselves. It's also a good idea to double check that all the compressors and all the dynamic processors on the desk have been disengaged. Now we're going to plug a signal into the desk. So moving to the live room, plug in your microphone. In this case, we are using a condenser. Now, Davey's going to plug here into wall box one. Wall box one, as you're looking out into the live room, is the one on the left and wall box two on the right. He's plugged into input one on wall box one, and he's going to take the stereo headphone send from one of the outputs. The stereo headphone sends are just duplicated across the wall box. No patch leads are required. Moving back into the control room, we now need to patch using an XLR cable from wall box one, where we've plugged the microphone, into the SSL's input. We'll just use the SSL input number one to keep things nice and simple. So we're going wall box one, input one to SSL input one. Moving back to the Macintosh, we can now start up Pro Tools in the usual manner. When we're starting a new project, we want to select the local storage and we want to give everything a reasonable name, not just called Untitled 1, 2, 3 and 4. Locate these in the HND sound folder on Storage Drive 1, please. Uh, selecting your correct group and click on Open. 
in the dashboard, we also want to double check that we're using the AST recording IO settings, otherwise we might get into difficulty. And also check the sample rate is 48K and the bit depth is 24. And there we've created our project. Now we're going to create a new track. We can either use Shift Command N or go to the track menu and select new. And we just want a single mono audio track. And there it is. On the mono audio track, we just double check the output is set to the main output. And also, it's a good idea to check the input is coming from input 1. If this doesn't look like this, then it probably means you set up the wrong I.O. settings or for some reason the Macintosh is not seeing the HDX audio interface. Let's set up a headphone send. So on the send output, just select stereo headphones. And on the stereo headphone fader that appears, make sure it's set to pre-fade. And then we can go to the input channel. So we're using a condenser microphone, so I've activated the phantom power. We can talk to our musician now using this TB all button. And he can hear us. So we asked him to start playing. And then we'll just adjust the gain appropriately. Now here we're actually looking for signal rather than necessarily for listening to it. So if you look up at the input level on the SSL, you'll see the signal coming in. We only kind of want that about halfway, just a little over halfway. Going back to the Macintosh, we can turn on the input monitor and turn on the record level. We won't see anything until you turn up the channel fader on the SSL, which is the output level. And lo and behold, we have signal. You can also see it's going down the headphone send as well. So having clicked on record, we're recording our final signal into our Pro Tools session. And you can see the waveform appearing on the edit screen. Thank you very much, Davey. You can also see that we've forgotten to name the track Naughty Boys. <laughs>